So guys, today before we continue with our culinary exploits with food and cooking food and cooking yummy food, I wanted to address a few points. Particularly, I want to do that whole baking soda issue because people are um, uh, criticizing my use of baking soda and I think I mentioned it when I was doing the bread that I didn't want to talk about it anymore because baking soda is a substance, it's a base or an alkali and it is a food substance now it's not on Dr. Sebi's list it's not going to be on Dr. Sebi's list because it is not a food but it is a substance and it is as alkaline as you can get it is a 9 I think 8.59 on the pH scale and um, there are so many uses for baking soda and I just wanted us to look at this uh, Dr. McCullough's uh, website here uh, where he talks about uh, baking soda and uh, what exactly is baking soda, 11 ways to use baking soda for your health, uh, deodorant, uh, insect bites and poison ivy, um, heartburn and indigestion, ulcer pain, uh, foot soak and exfoliator, relaxing soak, hand cleaner, splinter remover, sunburn remedy, enhanced sports performance. You can use it as a toothpaste, which I know about this quite well. Um, but you cannot get any more alkaline than baking soda. Once you move into uh, 9.5 on the pH scale and 10 and 11, you're talking about milk of magnesia and um, bleach and ammonia because we know that um, acidity and alkalinity could be um, alkalinity could be just as caustic and corrosive as acidity. Once you pass 9 and you go into 10, 11, 12 on the pH scale, which we all know the pH scale is from 0 to 14. So once you pass, 7 is neutral, which is water. Once you get into 8, 8 is good. 8.59 is baking soda. That's it. I mean, there's no food substance that is um, a 9. It's, it's baking soda. And then once you get into 10, 11, 12, you're talking about ammonia, and uh, uh, bleach and, and, and milk of magnesia, which nobody eats that. So, um, and baking soda is something, what I really wanted to say is that baking soda is something that is used for, um, I'm just going to, because I know there is a doctor in Italy uh, that uses baking soda in the treatment of uh, cancer so I wanted to pull this up and for us to look at this and read this <coughs> uh, helping to prevent and, and heal cancer this is a website uh, the truth about cancer baking soda, cancer treatment uses for prevention and testing. Sodium bicarbonate. This is a chemical construction, NaHC03, not zero, CO3. Commonly known as baking soda is a natural substance used for a variety of household baking and cleaning purposes. But did you know that there are baking soda uses for helping the body to prevent cancer as well as as it being a tool cancer patients can use to identify and stabilize cancer growth. So there is a doctor in Italy who apparently is healing cancer with baking soda. Okay, um, Many buffering systems equip the human body with the ability to optimize internal functions for as long a period as possible. One of these known systems is referred to as pH. pH, uh, you know, is, it means potential hydrogen. Uh, for example, a healthy body should have a blood pH level of 7.365, some say 7.5, some, you know, it doesn't matter. It's in the vicinity, which is slightly alkaline. 
Regulating pH balance is key to total health and wellness and is primarily reliant on healthy lifestyle habits, including a proper diet. Baking soda helps regulate pH level, which I did mention when I was doing the, the pancakes when I did the test with my litmus paper that they do use baking soda in emergency rooms when people come in and they are dying from acidic bodies they, they give them baking soda intravenously to regulate the blood pH so I did mention that and I did show proof in my test that baking soda is alkaline but I guess people don't believe this so you need to do your own research and what I wanted to say as far as the food um, baking soda is a substance that can be used to alkalize acidity in the food so if you're cooking something that is more on the acid side like the chickpea for instance which is uh, 3.5 on the pH scale and it is on Dr. Sebi's list. Let me get out of here and also get out of here because now I want to move into uh, the nutritional guide on Dr. Sebi's website and talk about that. So Dr. Sebi had said in one of his videos that uh, tomatoes, cucumber, you have cucumbers here on his list. And But before I go into the tomatoes and the cucumbers and uh, the okra, okra is over here. He did say, I did hear him say specifically that okra and cucumbers and uh, tomatoes are all artificial. Okay, but it is on the list. So this is what I'm saying. When people are criticizing, they have to do some work. You have to do some work on your own. First of all, you look at this. This is a guide, and guide is the operative word here. Guide, it is not the end all. It is a guide. So you have to look at the list, and you also have to listen to Dr. Sebi's videos and hear from his mouth what he's saying. I have not listened to all of his videos. I have listened to most of his videos. And this is why I know that he said that okra and cucumbers and tomatoes. Where is tomato here? I see tomatillo. Um, that it is. It is because tom uh, tomatoes are technically a fruit. So... He said that these things are artificial, but it is on the list. It is on the list. So then how do you reconcile this? This is a discrepancy. Okay, what you would call a, a discrepancy. It's on the list, but he's saying that it is artificial. And I think what he, what he also said on one of his videos that you can alkalize these things. If they're acidic, if they're a little bit on the acidic side, you can alkalize it. You can alkalize it. Here is a tomato. He said everything uh, except the cherry and the plum. This is the only ones you should have, the cherry and the plum. Now, why? The question is why. We don't know because he didn't explain that, but that's okay. But the thing about acidity and alkalinity is that you can alkalize uh, certain vegetables by adding something like baking soda in the process. So the chickpeas for instance, the garbanzo bean, uh, you can add some baking soda not just to alkalize because now we know, I'm telling you, I know for a fact that garbanzo bean is acidic. It is not alkaline. It is not an alkaline product, and it is also a hybrid because I did research on this, and this is a hybrid. Now, if you go on the, the advocates for, for Dr. Sebi, they would explain to you this. Um, they have some food alerts here, which I, I want to talk about as well. But if you go on advocates for Dr. Sebi, they explain a little bit about this thing about it's not on about it's on home 
it's about this is about transitioning okay if you are transitioning what he did was he gave us certain foods on this list for transitioning purposes until you get to the point where you see it says here dr sebi has been able to recommend specific beans garbanzo aka chickpeas rice wild rice and potatoes red rose as the least detrimental because I was a bit confused about this why is chickpeas when I found out that chickpeas is a 3.5 which is very acidic on the list I was a bit confused about it and I did think to myself even before I, 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 I read this here on advocates for SEBI because I am a questioning person and I don't always believe something that someone tells me. You tell me something and I go and I do research on it. And I'm always questioning, well, why, 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 why? Most people don't do that. They just accept something that they're told. I am not one of those people. So I did say, well, it's possible that the reason why he puts certain foods on the list is, number one, in my opinion, a lot of foods that are non-hybrid and alkaline are not accessible. You cannot walk down to the street in your neighborhood, down to the neighborhood supermarket and get these foods, like the Seville oranges, for instance. I had to order this all the way from Florida, and it cost a lot of money. It cost me $40 for 20 oranges. So it's not accessible, number one, and number two, it's expensive. So I think the reason why he had certain foods on the list is that those foods are accessible. And like they said here, it is the least detrimental for us to consume while we return to the African biomineral balance. This is a little bit um, unclear to me because return to the Afro African biomineral balance. What is that? And are these foods available? Or do we have to go to Africa to get these foods? I'm not clear on this here, okay? But I understand now the least detrimental. So these foods are the least detrimental, even though they are not, they are not alkaline foods like the, the, the chickpeas. And the tomato, the okra, the cu cucumber, it's an artificial food which he said it himself I heard it it's artificial so these foods are artificial and they're a bit on the acidic side how do you alkalize them you cook them with foods that are alkaline in the cooking process they would become alkaline forming foods or if you add baking soda for instance it would help in that alkaline forming process so this is what we have to realize about this list so when we keep focusing on this list we have to be smart about it we have to be intelligent about it and we cannot accuse be accusatory and accuse me of oh but this is not on the list and this is not on the list we, we cannot keep talking about this list you have to do your own research. You have to listen to Dr. Sebi. You have to be smart. You have to be intelligent. Because if you don't do that, it means that all you're doing is just being a follower. Somebody told you to do something and you do it and you're not questioning. And we have to question. Now, I wanted to talk about the apples here on the advocates for Dr. Sebi. They have here uh, food. They, do, they have food alerts, as we see here and they have apples as a food alert now apples are on dr sebi's list or guide as we say so how do you reconcile this this is a discrepancy the advocates for, uh, you know an advocate is somebody who is looking out for you and looking out for your interests and your well-being so they did sort of a uh, explanation on advocates for dr sebi here there is no explanation about this there is no disclaimer there is nothing so it's good to eat apples are good to eat as far as you are concerned 
is on Dr. Sebi's list. If we go back to Advocates for Dr. Sebi on the food alert, they did a little bit of an explanation, but it wasn't, I think it was missing something here. So what I wanted to say about this is that, yes, they did put um, lead for many, many years, because if we go here, there is an article here, the history of lead arsenate used in apple production. Since the 1890s, they've been using lead as a pesticide for some kind of moth on the apples. But this has been um, discontinued for since 19, I think it was, it's 1982. Because if you go here, there's an article here, um, Environmental Health Perspectives. They used this lead arsenate, started using it in 1892, and it says here that LA, which is lead arsenate, continued to be used in some locations into the 1970s and was ultimately banned in 1988. So if, if uh, advocates for Dr. Sebi is concerned about the lead, I think they need to explain some more that, yes, this was a concern, but since 1988, it was discontinued. So maybe this is why the people on Dr. Sebi, the people who is, uh, the people who are administering or the person who is administering Dr. Sebi's website and the nutritional guide, which I have no idea, I should find out and look into it, they did not feel the need to put any kind of disclaimer or explanation here as the people for advocates for Dr. Sebi did here. Because maybe they, because um, lead and arsenic uh, have been uh, discontinued as a pesticide, they probably don't see the need to put any kind of disclaimer here or say that you shouldn't eat it. So it's on the list. So this is what I wanted to talk about. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the chamomile or chamomile. Chamomile is on his list on Dr. Sebi's nutritional guide. On Advocates for Dr. Sebi, it is, it is not. It is one of, of the food alerts. Where is it? It's right here. Food alert. Acid, hybrid foods and herbs. Foxgloves, cayenne pepper, chamomile, comfrey. Um, I did hear Dr. Sebi himself talk about cayenne pepper, comfrey, rose hips, echinacea, golden seal. Okay, I did hear him say that myself. I didn't hear about the paprika, the foxgloves, did not hear about that. But this, again, is a discrepancy here between this uh, website, Advocates for Dr. Sebi. It's a food alert, but it is on Dr. Sebi's list here. So again, this is a perfect example of just being myopic and just looking at a list and being critical if I cook something that is not on the list and you say to me, it is not on the list. Well, you have to go and do your research and you have to not just look at the list. It's a guide. It's a guide. Guide is the operative word here. It is a guide. It is a guide. It is guiding you. It is not the end all. And you have to listen to Dr. Sebi's videos to get a more comprehensive picture, a more comprehensive understanding of what he wants us to eat and how he wanted us to eat it. And if I cook something, like when I did the, the pancakes, and there was some criticism also with the plantain pancakes, I did explain, I did explain that it is alkaline. So it's not on the list. It's not going to be on the list. It's not a food. It's a base. It's a base or an alkaline. And a base is created when you 
um, substances that are that are acidic, when you add a base to it and it becomes alkaline, you know, it becomes alkaline. So baking soda is a base. So this is what I explained. So it's not like I gave you something and I produced something and I did not explain explain it I did explain it and say that it is alkaline which is a fact I did not lie about it so I hope you go and do your research don't take my word for it that baking soda is alkaline this is like basic basic chemistry um, those of you who did not skip your chemistry class in, 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 in high school and or college know that that baking soda is such a basic basic um, substance and it is alkaline it's it's the highest that you can go in terms of that scale like I mentioned before so um, another thing I wanted to talk about um, is the the maple syrup which is not on Sebi's list I think it was on his list and it was removed but I noticed that they have here on advocates for dr. Sebi uh, food alert maple syrup formaldehyde is known to be used to make maple syrup it is used to keep the hole open in the maple tree it is a chemical that really does damage to your body yes formaldehyde is 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 is, 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 a, is a terrible substance and by the way I just wanted to give you so a little information about formaldehyde they use formaldehyde in vaccines as a preservative so this is why you should be careful with vaccines and giving your children and allowing these people to give your children vaccines. You need to know the ingredients in vaccines. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, they do use formaldehyde, or they did use it, but I came across an article here um, banned in the U.S. Okay? Um formaldehyde was banned in maple syrup by the EPA EPA Environmental Protection Agency removing power of formaldehyde as an approved substance with which to treat maple trees in the US in 1982 so they stopped using it in 1982 which is about um, 34 years ago 35 years ago um, so this person here said unfortunately I was not able to track down an online copy of the regulation that removed it from the approved list However, according to the producers I discussed it with, it's one of the things maple syrup is regularly tested for in the U.S. and in Canada. So it's not on the list, but just in case if you are transitioning and you like maple syrup and you don't like, because a lot of people don't like agave syrup. So if you're transitioning and you want to use maple syrup, I think it's okay to go ahead and use it because it doesn't have formaldehyde in it. You see, this is a what this is a very good website. I've been looking at this website, and it's funny that she said that she couldn't track down an online copy of the regulation. I like to go to the EPA directly, the EPA website, the FDA website. But you know what? You can never find anything on these websites you have to do a lot of research and a lot of digging and you might have to go to the manufacturers themselves as I think this person indicated here that she, when she said however according to the producers I discussed it with you see so you have to go to the manufacturers and usually they are forthcoming with information but the government, the FDA, which I call FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, I call them the Fraud and Deception Association. And they don't give you any information. If you go on the FDA website or the EPA, you would not find, if you were to search apples and lead or apples, you know, there's some information about the apple juice because apparently people were saying that I think there was some kind of recall of apple juice. So when they have a recall, they would go and talk about it on the FDA but if you're looking for real solid information and you trying to do some research you cannot find any kind of clear information on the fraud and deception association website or the EPA website but anyway this is the thing on the the maple syrup and the formaldehyde because uh, the advocates for Dr. Sebi uh, 
have it you know as a food alert so this is this is this is what I wanted to say so I'm going to end this here and again my advice is to not get on me for cooking something that is not on the list because you you may not know whether it's on the list or not because you did not or you may not know that this is something that Dr. Sebi talked about because if you have not listened to a hundred percent of his videos all of his videos which I consider myself a Sebian I follow his guide and I have listened to I would say about 80 percent of his videos I have not listened to all of his videos I am still continuing to listen to his videos I'm learning a lot this is where I learned about um, when he talked about uh, cucumbers and tomatoes and okros that they are uh, artificial okay he also said that uh, uh, walnuts are the only natural nut okay but we have Brazil nuts here but he said that walnuts are the only natural nut so then what does he mean by that you have to listen and you have to go and do research on this meaning that this Brazil nut is a hybrid most of the things here on this list I can tell you right now are hybrids but where are we going to get the original wild stuff we would have to go back to Africa you cannot go down to your neighborhood supermarket and get anything that is a non hybrid or non artificial at this point in history it's just it's impossible so how do you make the okra and the cucumber and the tomatoes how do you alkalize it or how do you make it alkaline forming you cook it in something maybe like like I do I cook my okra all the time in Kalaloo which I'm gonna come up with a very delicious Kalaloo soup recipe very soon and I always put okra in my Kalaloo this would alkalize it this would cause it to be alkaline forming when you mix this with this this is chemistry cooking is chemistry and if you understand about adding these um, alkaline forming food or bases bases you take a substance and you add it to an acidic uh, element or food and you create alkalinity so there is a way to do this and this is what I'm doing and researching and uh, y you know you have to I, I don't want to use the word trust because I'm saying p you know go and do your own research don't trust me I mean all I'm trying to do is cook some yummy food that's all I'm trying to do so you know I don't mind the criticism all I'm saying is when you criticize you have to come back with some kind of something that is constructive you have to come up with a constructive solution you have to come up with something where you are helping and not just criticizing I am a questioning person I don't just accept things I'm a Sagittarian like Dr. Sebi I don't accept anything you cannot squeeze me into a box even if you manage to squeeze me into a box I'm gonna find my way out somehow so criticize all you want but don't just criticize and leave us hanging criticize and come up with some th something that is constructive come up with some constructive solution or say to me you know I've been doing some research and here is what I found because you are helping yourself you are helping me you are helping the community of Sabians who want to eat healthier and have a healthy lifestyle so this is all for now and I hope that I didn't bore you with this I hope that I have given you some kind of information and um, go and do your research and listen to Dr. Sebi's videos I mean I don't think a day goes by when I do not listen to one or two videos of Dr. Sebi and I keep learning every day so I hope you do the same and I wish you all the best and I wish you health